all righty poker people so today is going to be um, a, a bit interesting uh, we are going to be doing day seven of 66 days of hand reading for sure so we've got that going on it's day seven and today of course is the heroes range that we're going to be ranging but here's the thing um yesterday well wrong page yesterday um uh ltu maximus a watcher or a you know a viewer on Twitch suggested or asked if there's a way to hide a lot of information. You can see how the screen is green right here. That means we won the hand. And you can also see the whole cards. Well, and uh, let me just hit this. These red ones mean that we lost the hand, right? And, um, you know, I thought about it, and it's really easy to hide my C1 in the whole cards. But you also have to hide this green highlight right here at the same time because... Well, if you see that it's green highlight, you at least know that you won the hand. Uh, a really good way to kind of simulate in-game situations is to highlight or to get rid of those colors. You don't know the whole cards. You don't know how much you won or lost in the hand. So since we're hand reading the heroes range today, that's exactly what we're going to do. So let me show you how to do that. Um, just the normal thing pops up. We're looking at small blind hands. Uh, so we got to we got to do a few things to at first to to make everything invisible, to hide everything from us. First, you configure reports, get my currency, just go all the way down with it. Go back up, whole cards, go all the way down with it. And we'll take a look at what this looks like before we move on to the next step. Okay. So now you can see the report changes. We have, um, uh, you know, those two went all the way to the right. So they're off the report now. And then we see the pre-flop flop and turn in river action, which is great. That's how we want to kind of assess whether or not a hand might be worth uh, worth reviewing. But now that we can see this is all red, right? These are all losing hands. And if we scroll down, we'll see some green hands and stuff. Um, so these are all winning hands. We want to get rid of those colors as well. So what you'll do is um, under the configure reporting options. And now, so you can see right here, winning text, winning text is a green color, losing text is a red color. We don't really have to worry about that down here because the uh, my C1 is all the way over there, my current C1, so we don't have to worry about that. We want to get rid of these positive rows, negative, uh, the green and yellow, or green and red colors. So we just highlight it, let's just make them all white. Negative rows, make them all white. Hit OK. Yeah, that's right. We got to hit refresh. So once we refresh it, bam, look at that. So we see that, you know, we're 25 NL in the small blind position um, facing the flop action, all the different street action. We do not know what we have in this hand. We don't know if we're winning or we're losing. So this is going to more closely simulate um, uh, like actual in-game scenarios right here. So we're going to we're going to hand read these. And um, uh, let's start off. Let's go to an early position. I don't want to uh, hand read right now out of the blinds. Uh, let's see here. So you can see these are all pre-flop folds and stuff. Let's look for hands with some good turn action. Uh, because obviously when you're hand reading, when, well, when you're practicing hand reading off of the felt, you want to see action on various streets. You want to know that there's some action that'll help you either narrow the opponent's range or or whatever the case is, you know, based on like whatever the board might be at the time. So if we do it by turn action, we see all these checks and stuff. All the X's are checks, C's are calls. Um, I don't know. Raise, call, bet. Raise, bet, bet. With a river action check-in. Well, uh, let's see here. 626, 426. Yeah, from a few months ago. Some of them very recent. I don't even remember those hands at all. Let's just go with, I don't know, raise, bet, bet hand. Sounds good. So, oh, the other thing is too, and I de demonstrated this on yesterday's video, I should have demonstrated it here. It's a good thing we already did it because always show hero whole cards should be unchecked. You see how those are checked? Unchecked right there, which is great. So if I were to click on my hand right now, sure, my cards would pop up, but I don't want to do that because the goal right now is to range my own, uh, my own hands. So the tools that we do our hand reading with Flopzilla, of course, and then we use Split Suits hand reading template. And uh, one of the 
viewers on Twitch yesterday asked a great question. He asked, um, you know, what good is this form if I'm never going to save this and go back and look at it again? Well, this form is really good because it gets you to constantly think about the ranges that you're uh, that you're narrowing down. You copy them and input them in here. It also gets you to think about percentage forms and combos within the range. The more you do this kind of practice, well, the goal with that is, is that this kind of understanding and thinking in terms of visualizing ranges, thinking in terms of combos, combo counting and what hands hit and everything, all that kind of stuff, you want to be able to take your off the felt analysis and put it to your on the felt game. And just the more practice you do with this kind of stuff, I believe the more it seeps into your subconscious and into your conscious mind, and then you can mm, recall it while you're at the tables, actually playing a hand, you know, when it matters. So that's why we use this right here. Oh, and uh, you can, of course, get these by going to uh, splitsuit.com slash templates and pay what you want for it. Alrighty, hand reading, where we have no idea if we're the winner or the loser in the pot, and we also don't know our range. And of course, you could see we're reading the hero's range today. So um, because it's the hero's range, we're going to assign our preflop range here and then narrow it through the streets by using all this. Uh, but then we'll just assign some kind of random hand that we think our opponent might be holding right here just so we have equities, uh, you know, equities showing. But the goal isn't to hand read our opponent today. All righty. So it's an under the gun opens, three big blinds, makes sense, and a six max game. Uh, let's see here, 75 cents, one caller, two callers, okay. Oh, let's see, who's my opponent? I bet, okay, cool. So we know that 808 wild date is our opponent. Yeah, because I, hid all that other information. I didn't know who my opponent was going to be in the hand. This could have been a multi-way pop for all I knew. Uh, let's see here. So we are raising under the gun. Now I can tell you right now that my under the gun range is actually quite narrow, roughly 15%, but we can get rid of some of this stuff here. Um, uh, I've been taking off deuces through fives under the gun just because I get three bets so much. This guy has a high three bet. No one else. This is a pretty good table to be playing at, but you get three bets so much, and I just so I fold those hands so often that I just don't like opening them under the gun anymore. You know, I'll often go as low as nine eight suited. I do not like these from under the gun for sure. Sometimes ace jack uh, is an open hand, so we'll keep that in the range for now at least. King queen occasionally off suit. Most of the time it would be suited. King jack suited I might open. Um, especially let's take a look at the blinds here. Look at that. He's a forty thirteen. I want to play with him. Don't know just yet, but possibly want to play with him. So because these guys are in the blinds, I'm opening to try to isolate one or both of them. Uh, so I think sixes are good. Nine, eight, king, jack, ace, 10 as the bottom of the... Yep, I'm good with this uh, nice little 10.7% range. 142 combos. Oh, whoops, I got to do all this other stuff too. 10.7, 142. Yeah, um, when it comes to under the gun and MP on six max, I am pretty tight in these two ranges. When it comes to MP, I'm opening closer to that 15% range that I first clicked on. So I'm gonna say uh, right now that this is our range, but before we get to this, um, 875-39040. Uh, I'll look at the date later, no big deal. UTG open. Two callers, S, B, B, B. No idea what I have yet. Flop is going to come. Turn will come some cards. River will come some cards. And then we'll put some uh, additional notes down here as we continue. Alrighty. So, oh, yeah. So we get two callers right here. And um, first off, we'll just assign a random hand to this caller. He could be calling, I don't know, King Queen. Just for now, we'll, we might change this as we go if I kind of get an idea of what he might have, but we'll just give him King Queen for now. It doesn't really matter. Um, two callers right here. That's our opponent. Okay. Ace, eight, four, club, spade, club. Okay, on this flop, our hand hits top pair or better, open in a straight draw or better, and these combo draws 42% of the time. So this is a pretty decent flop for us. It's it's not exactly an ace high and dry. It's pretty close to an ace high and dry board. As you can see, there's no open enders possible. Um, there's just gut shot draws and a flush draw possible. If this were like right here, ace eight, four of hearts, that would be more of an ace high and dry flop. This is an ace high and semi-wet flop. 
Um, oh, I guess there's other gut shots with the three five or the deuce five or the deuce three kind of hands. But as of right now, um, I think it looks like we have a really good shot of having, look at all those aces in our range. We have a lot of aces in our range, a lot of second pair hands. Um, one set or two sets, the aces and eights in our range. But let's see what uh, what happens here with our, let's see what they do first. Check, check. Okay, now we bet a dollar fifty. that's two-thirds pot into two players. Um, he does not, well, he folds two-thirds, he folds 100% of the time. Um, they're both looking pretty passive. I'm thinking I am making this bet for value right now. It could be a bluff because they both checked to me. If if this is a bluff, I might be only doing it on one street. But uh, we might keep, well, we'll keep some of our bluffs in right now. So sets, I am betting right here just to start building the pot because they both have full stack behind a two third stack, right or what's well, three fifths stack right here, 60% starting stack. So that's a good thing. So I'm thinking we're betting all our sets, our two pairs, we're betting our top pairs pocket pair below we're at least throwing that one street out hoping that they don't have an ace if we have pocket queens or jacks right here we're betting and if they fold that's just fine by me because that means they didn't hit the ace and at least i take down a nine big blind pot middle pair with a nine eight i do like the c bet on one street right here at least to at least to hopefully bluff them off a non-ace hand um get it get everyone to fold all their non-pairs right here now, weak pairs, I'm probably not betting. No made hand, no. Flush draw is definitely betting. Two card backdoor flush? Oh, those are all those. Well, the aces are already accounted for. But um, yeah, I would bet those. The two card backdoor, at least this one street. If we bet a second street, if we double barrel here, we could take away some of those weaker draws for sure. Yep, yep. So at this point, we have 72% of our pre-flop range, which equals to uh, 73 hands right now. 72% of the previous range, which is 73 hands. And that range is right here. So with our range, if this is his hand, oh, what a coincidence, he has a flush draw. Um, let's put our opponent on a random eight instead, just for now. I, I have no idea, oh, that's a spade, huh? Okay, a random eight instead. So we have 78% versus a second pair hand. If he had a four, we'd have 79%. If he has a random top pair hand, let's just give him a uh, three for a gut shot as well. Uh, we actually only have 43% because we have so many draws and, and missed hands in our uh, range. Rock Kid, hey, how's it going, Rock Kid? Thanks for joining, I appreciate that. Uh, so as of right now, ace eight four, we're looking pretty good with our range. We narrowed us down from 142 hands to 73. So we took away half our range with that C bet right there. I love it. Oh, yeah, let's just give him the ace three. It doesn't matter. Any kind of random top pair hand. So we get one caller and just one caller. So it's us and 808 wild date one. Now the three of spades comes. So on this, oh, we can't have a three of spades here. Let's give him a three of hearts then. This three of spades comes. Um... Now, obviously, we do have aces. We still have those top pairs in our range. But all of our different draws, whether they were flush draws, um, oh, I guess the backdoor flush draws picked up some, picked some, picked up some flop. Uh, I'm sorry, picked up some flush draw equity right here with that one. So things are looking good with that three of spades. Um, let's see here. If he does have a random ace, he's way ahead of us 83% of the time. Oh, because he picked up two pair with this hand. If he had uh, the 10-8, like we said before. He's only got 72% equity because he just has a second pair. And uh, that that turn just helped us, gave us a lot of backdoor draws. And we still have a ton of aces and over pairs to his eight in our range. So things are looking good. I'm liking this hand right now. Hoping we have an ace. Hoping. Uh, 393. What is that? Seems like over. Divided by 525. Five, like three quarter pot? Oh. So. Ha. Um. That three-quarter pot bet tells me I am totally going for value here. I'm not putting out a double barrel bluff versus a guy who appears to be rather nitty. His fold to C bet is 100. It's one out of one so far. But the fact that he stayed on the flop means that most likely he has an ace or a club draw of his own. I doubt he has like three, five for a gut shot on the flop. Um, like if you think right here, what is he calling with here? 3-5 is possible, but that means he called from the small blind with 
highly unlikely. You know, most likely he has some kind of an ace or an eight or a flush draw in his range. But we're not really raise, ranging him right now. But the fact that he called and then I increase my bet sizing from 67% pre to 75% on the flop tells me that I like my hand and I'm just betting for value against the guy. Um, so because I like my hand, what am I betting? What am I double barrel value betting here? Sets for sure, two pair, top pair. I think I'm probably betting all those, like even ace 10 suited down to that low. He has ace five, ace six, ace nine in his range where my 10 kicker beats him. So I'm definitely value betting that. Pocket pair is below. I think at this point, because he called the flop, I'm going to put him on an ace. I don't think I would double barrel my under pairs because I don't expect him to fold all that often at all. No, so if I am going to put him on, let's put him on an eight, ace seven, just a random ace. Um, so I am not going to be betting the pocket pair below. Middle pairs, what are those? Oh, nope, not betting. What I bet my flush draws right here. Two different flush draws of each of those spade draw club draw i think i would possibly bet we can filter some of these out i think i would be betting possibly the nut flush draws the king high flush draws all the other ones probably not i'm checking behind to get that free river but because i have the nut flush draw if i do hit i stand to gain a really big pot and then plus the fact that i have the nut flush blocker means that uh, with the with the king of spades or the clubs if I have the nut flush blocker, it means he doesn't have it, so he's more likely to fold if he has a bluff himself. Not a bluff. If he has a flush draw himself. So I think I would be betting with those. With those puppies. Um, oh, the flopped flush draw. Oh, don't worry about Flopped flush draw. Oh, yes, I would be betting. Oh, no, wait. We just took some of them out. What's happening? I guess I got to remove them again from this one. There we go. That's fine. The turn flush draw? Um, yeah, let's remove those as well. Oh, the reason why this flopped in turn is here because we talked about backdoor draws. So, bam, bam, bip. Okay, so we narrowed some of those. Open it. Oh, that's not even a part of anything. No flush draws. I'm not betting. So basically, look at that. I'm just betting a value range. Nut flush draws as well as top pair are better. That's all I'm doing here. So we've narrowed ourselves down to 34 hands, 45% of the prior streets range. No, 47 percent i mean what was it 34 hands look at that lovely we've effectively taken ourselves down from 142 hands to 34 hands which is what slightly over 20 percent 25 percent of hands or so and there's the range right here so things are going really well we're totally value betting I don't know if you can see this in the video if it's clear enough, but when I'm writing down the different boards and my notes are both flop and turn bets, feel like value bets as I increased the sizing from two thirds pot to three quarter pot on the turn. Totally feels like I'm just going for straight value. And this guy, either he has an ace or he just does not realize I've got a value hand. Uh, he just calls. Okay, good, good. Now the nine comes. Nine of hearts. So, of course, we whiffed any of the draws that we have right now. It did not complete, didn't complete a single draw at all. Great. So, top pair hands. So, looking at our flop, I'm sorry, our turn range, um, 30 combos out of those 34 actually have top pair or better right now. So things are looking good. If he checks to us, I think we should probably be uh, value betting. We check. We check. Why am I checking right here? Well, okay, I can eliminate the sets for sure because sets, I guarantee, are value betting. Now, all these top pair hands, I guess if you think about it, this player, our opponent has... Ace nine, ace eight, ace four, and ace three in the range, as, as well as every other ace, right? So there's 
there's not many. I mean, there's a few two pair hands that beat our current top pair. Whatever our kicker is, even if we have ace king, of course, top pair, I'm sorry, two pair beats our top pair hand. So I guess that's why I check behind. So I think even ace king here, I already got two streets of really good value. I could go for a third street of thin value if he does have a random ace that did not get a lucky two pair on us. But I think it might be kind of a toss up between value betting, thin value betting the river or not thin value betting. And it looks like apparently I decided to check behind. He just played passively on two different streets, gave me a lot of value. Doesn't mean I can't go for more, but I was probably concerned that he had a disguised two pair that he would just slow play in us the whole time, is my guess at least. And so he had ace five of diamonds. And actually, if we think about that, through the streets right here, flop the top pair, ugly kicker. Um, turned a gut shot draw, still a bad kicker though. Every every kicker, unless ace deuce, he beats. Um, and then the nine hits, and of course, once again, he checked with just his weak top pair hand. Makes total sense. Now I am expecting us to have some kind of ace here. Ace kick, good, woo! It fell within our range. So we narrowed ourselves down, oh, to 26 hands right here. Was that 77 percent so 26 hands so we took ourselves from 142 hands down to 26 hands means we removed 82 percent we kept in 18 percent of our range and our hand fell within that range so i am definitely going to consider this a hand reading success i love it right here um and thank you ltu maximus for making the suggestion of let me pull up uh, poker tracker again for making the suggestion of um uh anonymizing not anonymizing just hiding the important details of the hand because those details were hidden uh it made the i think it felt to me like it made the turn not the turn it made the hand reading a little bit more exciting and a little bit more of an unknown thing and i was using more of my logic um and at looking at the board looking at my sizing looking at my plays and t trying to determine uh what i'm doing there so that was a great hand reading practice. Thank you very much, LTU, and thank you everybody for watching. Let me show you real quick how to return this to normal, right? So the first thing you'll wanna do, configure report. Go back to my currency one and bring it up. I don't remember exactly where it was, but I think I'll put it after the position, my currency one. Go down to whole cards. Put it right there. And that should refresh position and then currency one whole cards position yeah currency one whole good so that looks good now we need to fix the uh, cell highlighting or row highlighting here and what I do is I just restore to defaults I don't like this light blue color so I always put it this gray and I go slightly lighter on the gray so that that's that gray color right there so if I hit refresh Ba bam everything uh yep it's back to normal uh the pink highlight for losing hands green for the winning hands and then the gray for my uh row selection right there cool beans so thank you everybody every uh thank you everybody for watching i do appreciate it and for those of you who are coming here from how to study poker volume two to watch the hand reading practice do everything that i did hide the hands from yourself hide the fact that you won or lost the hand and then do your hero hand reading practice all righty y'all thank you very much and have a good one and rock kid thanks for joining in the chat take care